If we fill a balloon with compressed air, there is a greater pressure within the balloon than outside. When we release the air within the balloon, the column of air escaping sets up a momentum going in one direction and the reaction in the other direction acting as pressure on the interior of the balloon propels our little rocket. Okay, so here we are again, testing, confirming, experiment with air pressure and what the implications are of air pressure. So when we look at this, we know that pressure needs a container. That's where the pressure comes from, the force off the walls of the container. If it wasn't contained, there would be no pressure. Science can't offer any, any evidence whatsoever that you could have two opposing pressure systems existing side by side without a physical barrier. So water needs to be contained. To all point to a container, it's unlikely that's a container that anybody wants. But this is the reality, and we're investigating this. We're not talking, waffling, making excuses, denying it. We're facing it head on and asking questions. Explanations and waffle Okay, so what I do here is just a, another practical demonstration um, to show that we are in air pressure. In all the previous videos we've talked about what the implications of being in air pressure actually means. And I'm also simultaneously going to demonstrate that rockets thrust of any sort is not going to work if there is no air pressure. Which is why you see the rockets go up, 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 and as the air pressure gets less and less and less, peter out, boom, down into the ocean, um, out of sight. So, we can definitely all agree that rockets can thrust in air pressure. We, fireworks, anything, you can see it. So, this, just a little water bottle, the wheels are just really there so it can slide. Um, Put a little bit of air pressure in here. The air pressure, which is obviously much higher in the bottle than it is out here, wants to equalise, boom, immediately rushes out to equalise and pushes off the air that's all around, the pressure that's all around, shoots forward. Okay, so what we can do is put a little shield in here, or column, and this will interrupt the surrounding air pressure, which is all angles, it's not there now. So when the air rushes out, let's see what happens when there isn't this air pressure pushing in from all directions, simultaneously everywhere, when that doesn't happen, what happens to the thrust? Again, put a lot more in. Go nowhere. Got no air pressure surrounding to thrust. So again, really high. Okay, now we can test this. Same column in with holes. Great suggestion from Pete and Pete. 
recommend checking their channel out. Take the nonsense apart one episode at a time. Excellent. Here we go. This one is for use. So, air pressure is immediately filling this. This is essentially the inside there is the same mesh pressure out here. There's no there's no stop on it. Um, there's no restriction, it moves. Again. Okay. Presentation of a rocket engine's thrust chamber, we see the same principle applied. Through combustion in the thrust chamber, great amounts of energy are released. Hot expanding gas escapes through the nozzle throat. Because of the design of the nozzle, the mass of escaping gas molecules is accelerated rapidly. This kinetic energy, bursting from the nozzle exit at supersonic speed, generates an enormous force. From the mass and acceleration of the gas flow is computed a basic measurement of rocket power, thrust. The reaction to this thrust is expressed in pressure against the top of the chamber here, against the sides here, and against the interior walls of the nozzle here, forcing the thrust chamber, and with it, the entire body of the rocket upward. So let's have a look at the rocket engine nozzle. And Wikipedia, um, let's scroll down to um, atmospheric use. Uh, the optimal size of a rocket engine nozzle to be used within the atmosphere is achieved when the exit pressure equals ambient atmospheric pressure, which decreases with altitude. So atmospheric pressure is air pressure. So right there in that first sentence, they are saying that um, rocket nozzle design and efficiency of such is dependent upon the ambient atmospheric pressure, the air pressure, which decreases with altitude. So if a rocket is travelling from the Earth to orbit, a simple nozzle design is only optimal at one altitude, 
losing efficiency and wasting fuel at other altitudes. So what they're saying there is in an ideal world, they would have a, a nozzle that changes its shape and its dynamics as altitude increases. Because there's only if it's a fixed shape, there's only one altitude at which it's at its optimal. So let's go down to the vacuum use. Now, my, the whole premise of this video is that I don't think rockets can work in a vacuum. So the first sentence that it says here, I think is applicable if you remove the word vacuum because it describes high altitude. So let's read it. For, no, for nozzles that are used in a very high altitude, it is impossible to match ambient pressure. Rather, larger area ratio nozzles are usually more efficient. So right there they're saying that at high altitude, the ambient air pressure is so negligible that they need to put much, much larger ratio nozzles on to account for the, the, um, the loss in air pressure. So again, air pressure is um, small at high altitude, therefore larger area ratio nozzles are more efficient. If you take this to its logical conclusion and um, traverse into space where air pressure is zero or very near to zero, um, how big or what, lo what area ratio nozzle are you going to need then? Would this be infinite? Do you see what I'm saying? So if we go back to look at what NASA claim on their um, Rocket Principles webpage, they claim on the ground the only, and I must stress that word that they use, the only part air plays in the motions of the rider and the skateboard, or in our case the rocket, is to slow them down. Moving through the air causes friction, or as scientists call it, drag. So they are claiming that the only part air plays with rockets on the ground in the Earth's or in the Earth's atmosphere is the drag effect that's caused um, by friction on the the body of the rocket itself. Nothing to do with the um, the propellant dynamics. So they are claiming the exact opposite of what Wikipedia are telling us, because they're telling us that there's only one altitude at which a particular shape nozzle or size nozzle is optimal and that they have to actually increase the nozzle ratio as altitude increases. Oh, and one other thing. Many people in the past thought that the rocket required a solid body of atmosphere to push against in order to move. Incorrect.